Good evening, everybody. Chris and Tiffany are here with High Seas Cruising, and welcome to this week's live cruise show. Yes. And think about what I was going to say. We got lots of people here already. We've got Bajarni says hello, everyone. Andre, hey, family, how are you guys? Um, Dilly, good afternoon. Chris and Tiffany, Frankie, hello, everyone. Uh, Andre, I'm good. Just getting home a day drive, had to. 
got to the office and get everything since we're going to be working from home. Traffic is horrible everywhere up near DMV area. Uh, Foss Pupa says, howdy, all. Robert says, good evening. California Linda says, good day, mates. <laughs> Tiffany and Chris, how's this? Today's the sea day. Tomorrow, Brisbane and Tuesday, we embark on the Grand to return to San Francisco. Great cruise. Have enjoyed the coral. I imagine you guys been out there cruising for a hot minute. Yeah. <clears throat> Three weeks. It's the third week. Yep. Lenny says hello from Geneva and Lenny. Attila's here. Says hi. Hey, y'all. And Rick is here. He says howdy. All right. People hopping in here. You know, it has been a, it's been a busy week. Since we were here last week, a lot. A lot has happened in cruising. Um, none of it good. Unfortunately, none of it has been all that good. Um, you know, we all know that the, the big story currently dominating the news is the incident in Baltimore with the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Yes. Where the container ship hit the bridge, collapsed the bridge, and... There's going to be a lot more information coming out about that particular story as we move forward. Got some more people hopping in here. Tara says, hello, everyone. Andre says, everyone's still trying to figure out how the bridge collapsed like that. Praying for the families. Yes. Well, I don't know. I, there's more questions about that particular container ship than anything. You actually look up that container ship, the, the Dolly, D-A-L-I. That's This is not the first time that ship has had an issue. It's not the first time that ship's had a problem. In 2023, there were some inspection issues with gauges and some of our other systems. Uh, when an inspection was done in Chile, that ship has struck a dock in Belgium before for power and propulsion issues. Um and now it's hit the bridge in, in Baltimore. That that ship has got a history of problems. It's got a history of things like this. Um, so I think this particular investigation and that particular ship and the company that owns that particular ship, I think they're going to have more things to answer for before this, this goes any further. Yeah. Um, I think they're really going to be looking hard at that ship because... I said she's got a history of problems and running into things and you know i know it happens cruise ships bump a dock ships hit docks you know it happens but this one is got a history and so i, I think there's going to be more to this as we go on and i think they're going to be looking real real hard at that ship um because when I look, you know, when I look at that video, you know, she made a very quick, what looks like a very fast right turn into that bridge support. So, you know, that ship was probably moving at a pretty good pace. And that's a lot of ship. That's a lot of weight to hit a bridge support like that. Um, so, but, it, you know, it's under investigation and they will figure out exactly what happened. And... James says, hello, Chris and Tiffany, and all high seas cruisers. Welcome to the show. What about the insurance company insuring the cargo ship? I'm sure that they're going to have problems, too. Um, I just did a little check-in, a little history on that ship, and you can Google that ship. And all this information about that ship is public information. Um, there's videos of it when it hit the dock in Belgium. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just straight took it out with the stern of the ship. So, I don't know. Andre said it, they said it was moving about nine knots. And that's a lot of weight with all those containers stacked as high as that, that thing goes. But, I, yeah, I don't know. I, they think that ship, the company that owns that ship, they're going to have a lot. I mean, they already do. But they're going to have a lot more to answer for. And it's going to be hard to say, oh, well, you know, one time thing, one time issue, you know, but it wasn't for that ship. That ship had a problem. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it sounds like it's had a problem for a while. Tilly says, I think Baltimore has to answer questions too. Why aren't there barriers around the bridge supports like here in California? Uh, that part, I honestly, I can't answer. I don't know enough about engineering or bridge bridge building to even remotely answer that kind of question as to why they would have them or wouldn't have them. I honestly don't know. That's that's way beyond my my expertise as far as that goes. But you know, time's going to tell on that, and we'll get answers on that. Now, as far as cruising goes, we talked. I did a video and I talked about it a little bit earlier. Carnival, of course, is going to be relocating the Carnival Legend down to Norfolk, Virginia. It's going to be down there for the foreseeable future. Um, I know they've only talked about the current cruise and then the follow-on cruise, but she's going to be down there for a minute. It, it, this is not going to, I don't think this is any way, shape, form is going to be a quick anything. Yeah, She's going to be down there for a while. The only thing we don't know yet is where Royal Caribbean is going to put Vision to the Sea. She's not due back in until April the 4th. Royal Caribbean at this point, all they've said is their teams are looking at their options and they will let everybody know what the plan is. But Royal Caribbean has not officially given any information yet for Vision of the Seas. Andre said it's going to affect the whole East Coast area near there from cruising. Well, that's also a cargo port. Mm -hmm. So cargo, you know, it's a cargo infrastructure port moving in and out of there too. So it's definitely going to have an effect. Rick says Carnival loves Galveston. Is there a possibility that they base two XLs here? Ooh. I personally just an educated guess. No facts to back it up. I think before they were to put a second XL class ship here, I think we'd see one go to the West Coast. Um, you know, they made the announcement for the fifth one. Got two in Florida, th third one in Galveston. I would honestly say that they move one of the two, uh, either let's say the Mardi Gras or the Celebration, probably to the West Coast. But the new ship in Florida would be my best guess for a plan. And that's purely a guess. Until it says the bridge ship was designed in the late 60s, built in the early 70s. Barriers may not have been required when it was built. That Yeah, and that's true too. And then Bajoran says, have they said anything about de uh, deparkation for the current cruises? Just for the Carnival Legend, she's going to debark in Norfolk, Virginia. They're going to bust the passengers back to Baltimore. Um, is their current plan for that? Get them all back to Baltimore so they can get to their vehicles and things like that. And then fly back out, head back home. They like said Vision of the Seas is the Royal Caribbean one and nothing firm from them yet other than they're looking at it. James says, my question is the ship was having problems as it pulled away from the dock and lost power twice in a five minute span before it hit the bridge. Wondering if the pilot on board have the power to stop it. I did hear that the pilot was calling in to the shore to the authority saying, hey, we're losing power on and off. He was the one that did the mayday call, right? Right. And, you know, they blocked off the bridge or attempted to start blocking off the bridge to keep traffic from coming on there. But of course there were workers on top of the bridge already. Um, but I do know too, depending on the channel and everything like that, once the ship is moving and the ship is heading down the channel, it may have been committed. It, at that point, it may have had to, it has to leave. I don't know if that's particularly the case for Baltimore, but I don't know if there was enough room for it to turn around, if that was even a safe action. You know, I guess when you're choosing what is the safest course of action, it they may have determined at that moment, the pilot may have determined at that moment that the safest course of action was try to get it out to sea. Didn't work, obviously, but that may have been what was determined to be the best course of action. Get it away from the docks, get it away from other ships, get it out to sea, and then deal with it. But again, it wasn't on the ship. I'm sure all that's going to be coming out, though, in the investigation is, you know, why did you do this? If you knew you were having problems, if you knew there was power issues, as soon as you pulled away, why did you choose to continue to go out there? And they'll have to answer for that. 
Tilla says a lot of European cars are delivered in Baltimore. That's all on hold till they find another port. No Ferrari for Chris, I'm afraid. Uh, I'll live. <laughs> I would just have to be okay with your truck. Yeah, I'd be okay with my truck. Bajani, everyone is sending ships to Australia. Mm hmm. Andre says Norfolk going through renovations at their port because we was supposed to get the sunshine in 2025. And then Bajar in Australia, the new XL. That is a possibility. With five of them, yeah, I wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I, the only thing I would say on us on our, uh, the, uh, I would say about Australia. I don't know if they would get the XL first or if they might get, you know, maybe like the panorama out of the West Coast is replaced with an XL class ship. I would think that they might get a Vista class ship first um, based on what they have down there now. But, hey, you never know. I don't speak for Carnival and you could be absolutely right and they could be like, boom, brand new XL class ship, Australia. Yeah. Gut tells me, though, a new XL would go to California. So Andre said, so with that said, would they bring both ships to Norfolk? I suppose it depends on how long Baltimore is closed. Uh, whether or not the legend's going to stay there very long or not. I think that's the determining factor. I think once they can resume traffic into Baltimore, it's reopened again. I'm pretty sure the legend's going to go back up there. Um, you know, it's going to be a process to get it cleared, but it's something that they have to do. Mm -hmm. They have to get it cleared. They have to reopen to marine traffic because it's a commercial port. You know, less to do with cruising than anything else, but it's a commercial port. They've got to be able to get those ships in there. It's part of their infrastructure and stuff like that. So they're going to have to get it reopened as quickly as possible. And James says, hey, Rick, I was wondering the same. So, yeah, I would expect that, you know, it'll be there for a while, but by 2025, I'll say that the, the legend's already gone by then. You know, I'm saying a few months is what I'm thinking. Um, you know, believe them or not, like them or not, but the federal government has already said that they you know, they want to be involved and try to get that reopened as quickly as possible. So they'll be putting, you know, forth assets for that to get that cleared as quickly as possible. Yeah. So I said that that's going to be an ongoing story. And really, at this point, we're just waiting to hear what Royal Caribbean is going to do for um, Vision of the Seas. So, but it's good that Carnival was able to relocate Norfolk's, you know, the closest port to Baltimore. So they can still cruise. People can still go on the cruise. They're going to have to, you know, replan their embarkation and disembarkation. But at least it still gives them an option. It gives them a choice to still go on their cruise. Carnival just didn't cancel cruises. Was it World Caribbean? We just don't know yet. Uh, but, of course, that's that's definitely not the end of the cruising drama from this weekend. Not even remotely. Um, James says, a new Excel in Galveston would be nice. Bajarn, I know it's all still new, but making lemonade out of well, out of lemons, they have the chance to make a taller bridge for bigger ships. That is very true. That is true. Um, Attila says, the legend is coming to Galveston. Maybe they can come to Galveston earlier and just stay till Baltimore is fixed. That's a possibility, too. I'm sure all the cruise lines are weighing all the pros and cons. Um, of course, at this point, though, they try to move the legend early. I think that's going to be their last option is to move the legend early, simply because if they do, they now have to refund all of those cruises that were already booked. I think if they move it to Norfolk and leave it at Norfolk until it moved, was scheduled to move out of there, they may have some cancellations because of the move, but they're not refunding every single person for every single thing. From a financial business standpoint, it would be more cost effective, I think, to leave her in Baltimore or leave her in Norfolk until it was time for her to move. 
Andre says the money the cargo company is going to pay out will probably bankrupt them. We'll see. That I've heard that that company that owns that ship is one uh has some of the deepest pockets. Um, extremely, extremely deep pockets. So, I don't know. Pilot says, "All oh, right, cancellation chaos if they move." Right, and that's what I think that they would like to avoid more than anything else. Is if they can avoid that at all costs, I think that's what they're going to do. Um, that but again, that's just my opinion. The carnival could come out tomorrow and say something one hundred percent different than that. All right, next, the carnival freedom boy. You know, if it wasn't for bad luck, the Carnival Freedom would have no luck at all. She has made it back to Freeport. She's currently in Freeport getting her whale tail worked on again. Uh, again. I mean, just imagine. Your whale tail catches fire. You ride around for almost a year without your whale tail. Five months ago, they put the brand spanking new whale tail on the Carnival Freedom, and now she's back in port because her whale tail was on fire again. And now it melted the other side of the whale tail. That that is utterly just bad luck. I think it's time just to just take the whale tail off of that. That's what I'm wondering. Is the Carnival Freedom just destined to not have a whale tail? You know. Is Carnival, you know, maybe they should just put the regular funnel back on it like she had and just be like, you know what? <laughs> you're good. You, you're just going to ride around like this. James is asking if it was a lightning strike like it was first reported. That's still what they're reporting it as a possibility, and it's currently under investigation. One thing about these cruise lines that I've noticed it, that if they don't have to come out and say it was definitely this or it was definitely that, they won't. It'll remain speculation. Well, we suspect it was and it's under investigation, but will the cruise line ever come out and say this is the actual read? This is what the investigation found. Especially if they investigate it and go, oh, when we put this whale tail on, this should have been done, and it wasn't done, and that caused the fire. They're never going to come out and say that. They'll say, they'll leave it as speculated as a lightning strike. But for the passengers on board the ship, the general report was they heard the loudest thunder and, you know, the loudest lightning strike. It sounded like it was right on top of them. That coincides with right around the time that the whale tail started smoking and caught fire. So it, it was either a really, really big coincidence that the fire started right when the lightning and thunder hit or it was hit by lightning. So I'd say the more probable choice is she probably got struck and probably started that fire. Yeah. So. Sharon said, are there odds yet of what will cause the next wind of tail fire? On that, you know, I'm sorry, if, the, if she gets another whale tail, and it catches on fire again, I will never, ever sail on that ship. Because at that point, you know for a fact she is cursed. Have you already sailed on We've already sailed on the Carnival Freedom once. She didn't catch fire of that. No. But boy, she is not having good luck now. Tell us, says the whale tail on Freedom, so sad. Yeah, maybe just give it a permanent chopped off tail and leave it as it is. It might be cursed. <laughs> I mean, that's just, that's just the absolute worst luck. To have your tail catch on fire again five minutes after five months after you just got a brand new one. That that's crazy. Um, but nobody hurt, nobody injured, a couple of smoke inhalation cases amongst the firefighters. So the positive to that. Um but yeah, smart thinking by the captain. Every report said, you know, they've caught on fire. It was bad weather. There was some heavy rain. The captain, you know, started heading the ship into the heavy rain to help make sure that nothing could spread. You know, when these incidents do happen, they are on top of it. They are good about, you know, their safety drills and what they have to do and get situations under control. 
So that's a good thing for the passengers on board. Well, Tilla said I had so much fun sailing on here her years ago. I missed it, but oh my, worry about that too. Yeah, I wouldn't go by that part of the ship. Be like, oh, well, there's a channel I'm going the other way. Stay up near the bow. Yeah. Um, but you know what? That's not even the end of the Carnival cruise ship drama for the weekend. No, no, no. Carnival, bad luck this weekend. The sunrise this past weekend decided to pop a water pipe. And it looked like it was a big water. You watch all the videos. That was a lot of water. Yes. But she popped her water pipes. And there was just water everywhere down the corner. There's tons of videos like over on TikTok and short videos of all this water on board the Sunrise. It was going in cabins. You could see garbage floating down the hallways. Um, and you can see clearly in the videos, this water is ankle deep in the hallways. And I did finally see one where I saw crew members, the maintenance ones, you know, the ones that wear the overalls from like engineering. They were standing over in a hallway and you could just see the water coming out of the ceiling under pressure like it was a water pipe. <clears throat> now, my biggest issue with the suck with that is Carnival's yet to say anything. Carnival has not come out and said, hey, we broke a water pipe. Hey, this is what this is all about. And I would think as a cruise line, especially if you watch any of those videos, People are like, worst cruise ever, horrible cruise ever. We're sinking in the middle of the ocean. The carnival would want to come out and go, look, we broke a water pipe. It made a mess. We cleaned it up. It obviously wasn't a big deal because they went back to port like on time when they were scheduled, disembarked, embarked the next group of passengers and out they went. Yeah. It's not like it even stopped the ship or messed with their itinerary or anything. You think they would just come out and say, yep, it was a broken water pipe. Oopsie. <laughs> it happened. And it happens. Yeah. It just happened uh, a couple days ago on a seaborne ship. It broke near the atrium. It was raining in the atrium on a seaborne ship almost because of a broken water pipe. It just happened. You just get wet. And it sucks. I get it. If it's in your cabin, it sucks. If you're wading your way down the hallway to your cabin, it sucks. You know, it's not a good day. But I saw a video over on TikTok, unfortunately. Somebody was filming a passenger was going down ankle deep, ankle deep, mind you, wearing their life jacket, banging on passenger doors, yelling that we're taking on water. She wasn't taking on water. She was leaking water that was already on board. <laughs> Let's be honest here. But if you're a brand new cruiser and you've never cruised before, and you have no idea that that much water can suddenly come down the hallway. I can see where it freak them out. If you had no idea that a fresh water pipe can just break, just like it can in a business, in a street, in your house, any other place that has water flowing, you know, who hasn't had seen a water main break in a neighborhood before? And suddenly there's water everywhere in the streets and your yards, and it's flowing down the road. Well, cruise ships have that same issue, that same problem. Tilla wants to know how old the sunrise is. Oh, is it her? She's a refurb. She didn't used to be the sunrise. She, oh, yes. Linda shares, we remember her as the Carnival Triumph. Okay, that's what I couldn't remember. The sunshine was one and the sunrise. Both of them used to be something else. All right, so if the sunrise used to be the Carnival Triumph, she's got a couple years on her. So she used to be a whole other cruise ship until she got that notorious poop cruise name. And they figured they read a rebrand her. Yeah. So she's not a youngin. James says, not a good weekend for Carnival. That was a lot of water on the sunrise. It, it was. And <clears throat> like I said, I wouldn't think a whole lot of it. I'm just really surprised that Carnival didn't try to get out in front of it. And be like, you know. Sometimes it happens because sometimes it does. But again, a brand new cruiser would have no idea they step out in the hallway or go down to their room and they're ankle deep in water. And next, you know, they're, I'm pretty sure the movie Titanic plays in their head. You know, they're like, icebergs. 
even though they're off the coast of the Bahamas, and they're running and grabbing life jackets. You see people, it, it's insane. Bajarin says, put on the swimsuit, sandals, and go about your day. <laughs> go watch the videos, because while they're all, there are the ones where the people are freaking out, wearing life jackets, and there's some where, there's one where one guy, he's just walking down the hallway, he shorts his t-shirt and his Crocs. Just like, yep, water. <laughs> he just keeps on track. He has been on a ship of war because he was just like, yep, it's wet down here, and he keeps on driving. I tell him that, oh, that's all triumph. That's why they are quiet about the leak. <laughs> <laughs> They're worried about the poop cruise. It wasn't leaking poop. That's a good thing. Yes. Rick said, I was on triumph two weeks before she broke down across the Gulf out of Galveston. All right. So, yeah. So, she's got a couple years on her. And like I said, it's going to take, a, you know, an inch of water down on some of the lower decks. Because it's not like this inch of water inch of water was up on deck 12. You know, we're talking deck 2, 3. You know, it, it's down low. You know how much water it would take to leak out of that pipe to remotely affect the operation of that ship to cause her to lift, tilt, or even consider to say, she's not going anywhere. Well, keep in mind, all that water is fresh water that was already on board the ship. It's not like she's taking on water. It's not like she sprung a leak. Believe me, if that ship had sprung a leak in any way, shape, or form, that was seawater coming out of the ocean into that ship, it would have been a whole different situation. There would have been alarms and, uh, you know, all kinds. Of, you'd have heard that seven whistle mess that goes on for emergencies. You'd have heard all of that mess. Um. Versus what we're hearing now from Carnival, which is much. They even said they didn't hear a whole lot of announcements on the ship. Now, take that with a grain of salt, though, because you know, when pe some people make these videos, they make them purposely, purposely to sensationalize an issue, to sensationalize a problem, to make it worse, to make it sound worse, so they get more views and more clicks and all that kind of junk. Instead of just coming on there and going, "Yep, floor's wet. They're going to put the dryers on it. It's going to dry." It's marine grade carpet. It's marine grade materials. Um, so it's different than stuff you have in your house. And so the ship went right back out. Yeah. Same thing. So Matilda says, My first carnival cruise was on Triumph. I have happy memories and we had a lot of fun on her too. So no bad feelings about the ship, but so lucky the water was fresh and not sewage. Yuck. Yeah. Now sewage is just gross. If it had popped the pipe like that, that that would have been that it would have been nasty, um, but it, you know it happens, and we just talked about it. Said Seaborn had an issue um, at the beginning of the weekend. I think it was Friday. They popped theirs. Carnival popped a pipe. So it, it it's been it's been interesting, you know. And while not a Carnival ship, you know they had the engine room issue aboard Holland America's New Amsterdam. That happened. Two crew members lost their lives in that particular incident. And I saw that one called two different things. At first, they kept reporting it as a fire. It was a fire, it was a fire, it was a fire. And then it changed. And they said it was a steam, a steam issue. That something happened with the steam. So, I don't really know. I don't know which case, other than Unfortunately, two crew members in an engineering space did lose their lives over that one. So, yeah, it, it's not been a great weekend for positive cruising things. It, it's been a rough weekend. Yeah. It really, really has. So, we're hoping this week's going to be a little bit better. Going to get folks home from Vision of the Seas. Royal Caribbean's going to figure out what they're doing. And we'll be able to move on in a more positive light. No more ships on fire. No more nothing. Yes. So. I think we're all caught up. On we're all caught up. Well, I think that also catches us up on the majority of the cruise news. That's about everything that happened. Um, and negative, anyway. There was plenty of positive news that also came out this week. Lots of cruises going in and out. No problems at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Keep in mind, that's a small percentage of cruise ships that have these issues. But the ones that go out have no problems and come back. They don't make the news. No. They're just out there having a happy, good luck, go lucky time. 
Now, they did say that Royal Caribbean is planning to build a brand new private beach club in Cosmo, Mexico. Wow. Yeah, called the Royal Caribbean Club Cosmo. Very original name. They put a lot of thought and effort into that. Royal Caribbean Beach Club Cosmo. <laughs> James says, yeah, the non-cruisers had a field day this weekend with all that's happening in cruising. Oh, yeah. They sensationalized everything. You know? Everything. And you got to wonder, too, how many of those people were not even on any of those ships? Any of them. And you can always tell the cruisers from the non-cruisers. Um, I saw videos of the Carnival Freedom when her whale tail was on fire. In the video I saw, the guy was like, yep, look, whale tail's on fire. But that car, no panic, no nothing. He goes, whale tail's on fire. They're putting it out. Yeah. Like, oh, you've been on the ship before. Yeah. It seems like a long time since the plane crashing at Port Miami. I'm not even familiar with that one. He's that one. I don't think. Yeah, it, it, it's been crazy. Like I said, positive news, positive news. New Beach Club in Cosmo. That'll be interesting and exciting. We go to Cosmo a lot. Yes. Um, Royal Caribbean's going to build the new Royal Caribbean Beach Club Cosmo. They say it's going to be within walking distance. I don't know how true that is because I'm, you know, kind of know what's on either side, I guess. But they said it should be within walking distance of the cruise port. You'll be able to walk right down to it. It'll be only for Royal Caribbean passengers. And this is going to be similar to what they're building in Nassau, Bahamas. Because you know, the one in Nassau is supposed to actually open this year. Royal, can you guess its name? Royal Caribbean Nassau? Royal Caribbean Beach Club Nassau. That's right. <laughs> Attila the Fun says, what do y'all think about the trends to build these private clubs? Includes Carnival Celebration Key. What about the new island in Belize where ships can finally dock? Is that open yet? I have, I have not heard if that is open yet. Last time we were in Belize, and it was a couple of years now, we saw it under construction. Mm -hmm. And so I actually had some video that I took of it while it was under construction. And I keep wondering, yeah, okay. I keep wondering when that is going to open. Well, Attila says it's not. Okay. They've been building on that for a while. Because when we were in Belize, that was back on the Vista. So that was during Carnival's 50th celebration. So that would have been, what, March last year? I think March last year was when we were in Belize last. And they were they were building it. It looked like they were pretty far then. Uh, is there any word on Panama Canal transit? The only thing I've heard about those recently is there was a, I saw a cancellation. I, I, I'm trying to remember what cruise line it was. But the low water issues in Panama did cause a cancellation of one of the ships. So they're limiting the number of ships that they can put through the Panama Canal on a daily basis based on the water availability. Um, but the water down there is really low. And that's a tough one. We haven't seen any mass cancellations from it yet, but where the big concern is going to be is going to come up here in not too far away a ship's reposition for Alaska, because you are going to have ships coming from the east side, east coast, over to the west coast to do Alaska cruises. They go through the Panama Canal. When the Alaska season is over and they reposition back, they come back through the Panama Canal. That's where the Panama Canal in specifically is going to be in question. Because if these ships can't transit, what are the cruise lines going to do? They've either got to go all the way around and come up, or they're going to have to cancel some stuff and go, okay, well, the ships on the West Coast are all we can use. I don't see that being the case. Alaska is way too popular. They're going to get ships over there. But they could have some very long repositioning cruises if they end, it comes down where they can't go through the Panama Canal. And we've seen a couple here and there cancellations, but nothing on mass yet. 
So it is worth watching, though. Yeah. Jim says, yeah, I read a comment on one page. The guy said government needs to step in and shut down cruising, period. He also said only people that have no common sense go on cruises. Well, in my opinion, only people that have no common sense make comments like that. <laughs> Let's be honest. There, there are people out there that hate cruises, they hate cruise ships, they hate the idea of it, and that's fine. You don't like it, that's more cabins for the rest of us. Don't go. Don't get on there. Don't have anything to do with it. I don't understand why people even make those types of comments. Because that's what they believe, and they want you to believe it, too. Well, they're wrong. They're not going to ever make me believe it. That would be no different than me going, I only cruise, so if you're taking a land-based vacation or an all-inclusive resort, they should shut them all down. That's just as ridiculous to say. You know? That's you'd be you saying, well, I only go to Disney World, so shut down Universal Studios. It's asinine. It's moronic to even say such a thing. You don't like it, just don't go. Yeah. Uh, Bajar says, time for South America long repositioning cruises. That may be what ends up happening. If it, Panama Canal didn't get sorted out, they don't get some kind of water going down there, they may have to do that. And that could be an opportunity for some, you know, cruise ports and some cruises that are not common. Yeah. They have to go all the way down. Believe me, the cruise line could be like, well, we have to go all the way down and around, you know, through under South America. Well, while we're there, let's stop at all these new places. Let's make a, you know, a super repositioning cruise out of it. If they can make money doing it, they will. Yeah. They're not going to play about that. James agrees with you and says a 30-day cruise around South America would be nice. Yeah, and it, and it may come to that. It, it honestly may come to that. We'll see. Time, time is going to tell on that one. But, yeah, it, it goes to show that how important some of these canals are. You know, look at all of the stuff going on with the Suez Canal and the Red Sea. Yeah, because of the issues that are happening over there, how many cruises have been redirected, itinerary change, canceled and moved over the fact that it's just not safe for them to go through there. Panama Canal is no different. If they can't get those ships back and forth through there, it's going to create an issue that's going to cause itinerary changes and shifts. Because you figure if they have to be in Alaska, but by the beginning of the Alaska season, and they cannot go through the canal for some reason, they got to cancel cruises. And believe me, they're going to cancel this end for a longer reposition. But John says, I agree, James, don't count on a ship stop in Antarctica, though. You know, my question is, and, and I don't know that I would have to look at the map. If you go all the way down through South America, does that go through the Drake Sea? I don't know. I don't know either. James is telling everybody to hit the like. Oh, thank you, James. I wonder if I wonder if that goes through the Drake Sea if you go down that far. I don't want to go to the Drake Sea. That's a rough stretch. I haven't sailed through it either, but I've seen a tons of videos of what it looks like going through there. That is a cruise that is not for the weak stomach. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Mm -hmm. I'd, be I'd be in the cabin the whole time. <laughs> Hugging a pillow? Yes. But, yeah, so it, it's going to be interesting. We'll see. I mean, it's already, we're, you know, we're coming towards the end of March. And Alaska starts end of April and really kicks up through May. So some of these are going to come to a head and to a point pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to have to be some kind of answers and some kind of determination. But since the cruise lines haven't said anything about it yet, I suspect that they are, or at least still believe that they're going to be able to get through Panama Canal without too many problems on a straight passenger like that. I think if the situation continues to deteriorate, though, I think at the end of the Alaska season, that's probably the one area that we got to watch to look out for the most if that situation does not improve down there. 
So hard to say. Hard to say. Rub my magic eight ball, shake it up, you know. Yeah. Will Cruz's work. Is it decidedly so? So Sean says as long as the money keeps flowing, they will find a way. Oh yeah. They will find a way. They will get those ships there. It's just it's gonna make some for some longer repositioning cruises. Yeah. People will book them. That's the one beauty part of it. And I mean, if I had the absolute time and the cruise was priced right and it came at the right time of year, and they were like, hey, we can't go to the Panama Canal. We're going all the way around South America. I might be tempted to get on that just because I've never been that direction. Yeah, Something like that would tempt me. It really would. I can tell you all about it when I get back. Yes, yes, you could. I mean... I think you would have the opportunity to stop at some places that regular cruise itineraries just don't visit. You know, and then they take advantage of that. And I don't blame them. I would too. So, that would be okay. So, we talked about Panama Canal. Oh, you know, there was a question up there about beach clubs. I got to go back to that one. What do we think about them building the beach clubs, the private islands? Um, and the private cruise destinations because the cruise, honestly, the cruise lines want to control as much of your money as they possibly can. If they can go to private islands, if they can go to private destinations, they keep control of the dollar, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, especially if they build these bigger and larger cruise ships. They want the Coco Keys, the Celebration Keys, the Half Moons, the Princesses. They want that. They can take their ships to it. Usually the stuff on the island is controlled by them. The money is controlled by them. When you spend money, you're spending it with them. They like that. Mm -hmm. uh, a private beach destination in Cozumel. Well, if you go book and stay over at their private beach destination, you're staying with Royal Caribbean. They keep your business versus you going and booking an excursion with somebody else, a third party excursion, just walking around town and having lunch and a good time. That money doesn't go to them. Um, so it benefits the cruise line. But I also think it benefits the cruise passenger. I think there is a benefit to the cruise passenger. Coco Key, it's a nice place. Half Moon Key is nice. I like the private island destinations. They're calmer. They, you know, you don't have all the city traffic and the cars and all that kind of other stuff like you do if you're walking around a cruise port. Um, they have beautiful, beautiful beaches. Um, you got some little bit of shopping, not necessarily a lot like you would before, but you got, you know, got your shopping, you got food, you got beautiful beaches for an awesome beach day. They're calm, they're quiet, they're beautiful. I think you miss out on a little bit though with all of that. I think you do. But I think they have a place. Yeah. I think they have a place amongst cruising. You know, I've seen some cruises upcoming where it's all just private islands. You know, private island, private island, private island. I don't, want to do that. I don't think I would enjoy that either. Because they, for us, a big part of cruising is the other cultures that you visit. And going to a private island, you miss the cultural experience of cruising. So I wouldn't want to do one that was all private islands, but I have enjoyed private islands. So James wants to know if you're still thinking about a November cruise. I am still thinking about it. Um, Bajaran says Brazil, Argentina, Peru, and West Coast of Colombia, not a bad trip at all. Mm, then when you come back up, maybe a stop in Chile, um, Galapagos, maybe something up through that area. That'd be a nice one. James says, I like the idea of private beach clubs. Bajar says, yes, James, we saw the video. <laughs> See, James, you are forever, forever now known. Because there's video proof that lasts forever. Rick says, with five, six, or seven ships arriving in Cozumel, the Royal Beach Club will have little impact on the other beach clubs. No, I don't think it will. And it's not going to affect anything with Carnival or any of the other cruise lines go there. It's just for Royal Caribbean. 
So I, I don't think it will either. And it's one of those ones where I'd be happy if we go there on Royal Caribbean. I'll, I'll go check it out once. I'll see how it is. The concept art pictures look pretty. Um, I like Coco Key. So I like some of the stuff that Royal Caribbean has done. I love Cosmel. So I would check it out. But at the same time, I really like Mr. Sancho's too. We had a great time with Mr. Sancho's. James says, yes, yeah, thank you, Chris and Tiffany. <laughs> you wanted to go with us. So I guess my thing with the private islands and stuff like that, are the governments around there eventually going to stop that because now they're not getting as much of... Oh, no, they, they tax those too. Okay, because, I mean... No, no, you're still taxed. If you go to a private island in the Bahamas, you are still taxed. Just like you went to any other port in the Bahamas. Yeah, but when you go to the the regular port, they get more money from the tourists than they would go into that private island, would they? No, because they still charge fees for you even getting off the ship in a private island, and particularly in the Bahamas. I know there's port fees and all of that. I'm just thinking. No, no, they add, there's more on top of that. No, no, the Bahamas has figured has figured out ways to add additional. Uh, tourist tax, uh, disembarkation fees, and stuff like that on top of cruise passengers, particularly some of that targeted at the private islands to make sure that they are getting money. Because technically, they still, they're still still islands in the Bahamas. They fall under Bahamas regulation. The Bahamas can do that. Um, I guess I suppose it's probably no different than, you know, property taxes here in the United States. Because, you know, it they cruise like and say, well, I own that island and the Bahamas can say, cool, you still have to pay us for it. Yeah. So, so they the, still get there. The government's getting the money, but the people that we were helping. Correct. Are not. Except for the ones that come work on the island. Right. Right. You're talking about them putting money specifically into the local economies of the cruise ports that they visit, then no. But if you think about the Bahamas itself, really, you have Freeport. You have Nassau, you have Bimini, but which other big cruise ports are there in the Bahamas that are actually benefiting from the cruise lines, though, other than those major ones right there? And Bimini is technically considered, I guess, Virgin Voyages' private island destination, but all the cruise lines go there, but there are locals that actually live on Bimini, so they get to take advantage of that. So... Believe me, that and Nassau, I don't think is lacking for tourist dollars at all. Nassau continues to break cruise passenger records year after year after year. They can put seven cruise ships in Nassau at the same time. And believe me, people are off them ships spending that money. Yeah, they 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 absolutely are. There, there's no lack of tourism dollars from cruise passengers for the places where they, they go. But that, you know, that's enough on taxes. Nobody likes to talk about spending more money. Right. We want to talk about spending less money. Less money. Now, here's a question. And I read this today, and I'm curious to know what anybody else thinks. So I'm not going to give my answer. I'm going to ask what you guys think first. Carnival Cruise Lines has announced their first quarter earnings. They said profit. $5.4 billion in profit, in earnings, for the first quarter. What do you guys think Carnival is going to do? Raise prices. I told you not to say it. <laughs> I didn't say it. I whispered it. At, into the microphone that hears, you know, the dog bark three neighborhoods away. Um, James is saying, I'm wondering if they can compete price-wise with Mr. Sancho's and others if they are pretty good deals. Think RCL can keep the price low enough, which is a good point because, you know, you could pay, what, $60 to go to Mr. Sancho's. You get all the food, all the drink, pool, all of that stuff. Is RCO going to do the same thing because they like the price used for everything? Yeah, I would honestly say that I don't think that they could. I don't think that the Royal Caribbean Beach Club could compete with some place like Mr. Sancho. Just thinking how cruise lines operate. Is the cruise lines really going to include all your drinks for the price to get in there? 
or are they going to want to charge for the drinks? They're either going to say, you know, will your drink package work in the Royal Caribbean Beach Club? They'll probably say yes. Um, but if you don't have the drink package, they're going to pay for drinks. So either way, Royal Caribbean, I just, I don't see Royal Caribbean because, you know, Mr. Sancho's, when we went, it was $68 a person plus the taxi fare to get over there. But like Tiffany said, all the food you could eat, as much of it as you could eat, and it was good food, all the drinks you can drink, and they are not stingy at all with those drinks. They will walk by and randomly put more drinks on your table that you didn't even ask for. Yeah. So they have no problem with those drinks. We were never thirsty one single time. Now they did have the stuff that you had to pay for, like the to play on the the bouncy toys and the water right and, and some of the extra stuff. But like when we went to Norwegian private island, you had to pay for your drinks, you had to pay for your food, you had to pay to do this, you had to pay here, you had to pay there. Everything you paid for. Right. So Is Royal going to do the same thing from a cruise line. I guess if you follow the what the cruise lines do as a normal. I would say that it, it, I guess we'll have to look at something Royal Caribbean or it has and say Coco Key. Drink package works on the island. So you're good. They serve food on the island from, you know, the buffet like a lot of private islands do. But if you don't have a drink package, you're paying for your drinks. Um, I suspect that a private beach club would probably be something similar with additional options that you could pay for. If you wanted snorkel equipment, you'll pay, you know, paddle boarding, water toys, stuff like that. I'm sure there'll be a price to go along with that. I still don't know if they're going to keep that price below $68. And include everything that you can already get at some place like Mr. Sancho's. Yeah. And Mr. Sancho's has got an awesome vibe. I don't know. I'd be I'd be hard pressed. I would have to try both and then come back and compare. But I would say that some place like the Royal Caribbean Beach Club, honestly, would be for people who don't want to get into a cab because, like Mr. Sancho's, there's no excursion for that. You have to get into a cab, ride there, have your fun, get in the cab, and come back. It's not a problem. It's not an issue. But you know that not everybody wants to do that. Not, not everybody is comfortable with going on something that isn't specifically led by the cruise line, controlled by the cruise line. So some, there will be people that will go to the Royal Caribbean yeah. Beach Club. I just don't know that it'll be better or more cost-effective. The Jarns had private islands all over the Gulf. You heard it here first. <laughs> Everywhere. Um, and they ordered a new ship when they saw the profits coming. Isn't that funny how the fifth ship magically came out when they announced their profits? What I'm curious to see and what my thought process is, when they announced the last big profits there at the end of the third and fourth quarters, prices went up. And are we going to see it again? That's what I'm curious. Are we fixing to face another round of increases in drink packages, increases in Wi-Fi, increases in gratuities? You know, is that coming because they're running on a record profit high? Their current 2024 remaining inventory is very low. They do not have a lot of bookings left. Um, people are already booking 2025, the beginning of 2026. So far, only July or June is available for Carnival. I looked because we haven't gotten to the group cruise yet, but the people are already booking those cruises. So are we going to see another round of price increases while bookings are super high? That's what I'm waiting to see. Um, hello from Mr. and Mrs. Alien. Better late than never. <laughs> uh, everybody's saying hi to Alien. Attila, my family prefers ship excursions only. No private clubs in most cases, but me personally, I'd get in a taxi and go to the Mr. Sancho's of the world. Uh, I mean, we've, we've wandered off in a cab before just to, to try something out. I, I will say this much, at least in Cozumel, and at least when it comes to like Mr. Sancho's and Paradise Beach, which is another one there, those cab drivers are there. They're waiting. They know where you want to go. Um, you you know, like, hey, Mr. Sancho's like, get in, let's go, let's go. And 
they're, they're going to get you there. And then when you're ready to leave, believe me, there are cats waiting in front of Mr. Sancho's to take us back. We never waited for anything. They were super professional about it. So at least in Cozumel, I would feel perfectly f- comfortable, you know, taking a cab and going off and doing that stuff in Cozumel. Yes. They're professionals. They want your business. They want you happy. They want you to tell your friends and they want you to come back. And Mr. Santos was, I mean, they caught us at the door. Uh, the first guy that, you know, talked to us said, oh, that line's long. Let me take you over here and get you guys through faster. I have nothing but good things to say about that entire experience. Yeah. Wasn't a hiccup, negative hiccup in the whole thing. Um, the Jarn says 2025 bookings are getting scarce already. Mm-hmm. Phyllis says, yep, yeah, right. Cozumel is safe and all good. Some other places, maybe not so much. Yeah, no, I don't. I'm not saying I would do that in every place around the world. That's for sure. Um, that is for sure. But Cozumel is the one place that I've been to enough and I got enough experience with it that I feel more and more comfortable to move away and but Tiffany and I like that if it's a very first time we've ever been to a port we're either exploring on our own close to the port to get a feel for the place or we're taking a ship excursion through the ship so we can get a a feel of the island the place excuse me our safety and all that kind of stuff too we're not just crazy buck wild Tiffany tries to be but I tell her no 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 Okay, but that answers private islands, I think, or at least our opinion on private islands and private destinations. I think they have a place. I think they're good. I enjoy them. I think it gives cruise lines a little more options, especially as more and more cruise ports are like, eh, I don't know if I want your, you know, quantum ultra icon, you know, class ship with, you know, 12,000 people on it docking in my city that private islands become more predominant. Another James is asking, I'm going on Independence of the Seas besides the casino. Where can I enjoy a cigar? Doesn't um, (coughs) Royal have cigar rooms? Yes. Yeah, no. Yes. Boy, you're going to get me live. Deck five? Mm -hmm. Deck five. Portside? So deck five, Lido deck, casino, and I believe you'll have to check Independence because I'm not 100% sure she might have a cigar bar on board. Cigar lounge. A cigar lounge on board. But I do know we were on we were on a Royal Caribbean ship, and up there on deck 12, right above the Lido deck, in front of the bar. Remember they had that section that's off and they do cigars under the stars? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were doing a thing called Cigar Under the Stars, and they actually had an area set up um, on the deck above the Lido, right by the pool bar, and, and I forget all the names of it, where you could, they did, yeah, Cigars Under the Stars, and then Cigar Smokers got together. But, yeah, there's two outdoor smoking areas on uh, Royal Caribbean ships, the Gar Bar, I believe, and, of course, the Casino. But if you go out on the Lido deck, be careful of the sleepy chairs. No, it's not on the Lido. That's deck five. deck five. That's the problem. Deck five. Um, the John says a good point. When do the big ships become too big? I think they're already too big. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of at that point already too. Um, I really am for me. And it's a personal, just a personal opinion, but you know, I don't necessarily need all of that stuff. On a ship, um, you know, like robot bars, they're one and done. Roller coasters, I think once you ride it, you've ridden it. Um, Go karts on top of Norwegian, once you do it, you've done it. And at that point, you're now looking for the comfortable things that you like in cruising, and you're not going to get as much of that on the big ships. Yeah. Because they they take up a lot of space, a lot of deck space to put in all of the bells and whistles and toys and escape rooms and laser tags and 
VR rooms and all that other kind of stuff that. So listen, I tell you, after my last cruise, I'm focusing on a relaxing, low key cruise for a while. I'm easygoing and focus on low key things, not clubs or busy beaches. Just chill. Yeah, and that definitely. I mean, even when I'm looking for all of the entertaining stuff, I still also want to be able to just chill. Yeah. I like a nice balance between the two. What the, one of the things I do like about Royal Caribbean's larger ships, though, and I gotta have to admit it, is the entertainment on board. I do like the entertainment because you have the entertainment in the main theater, you have the ice shows down on the thing, and then you have the aqua shows with the water. I like the multiple shows. I like the shows. I like the entertainment. And your ship has to be a little bit bigger to have those particular items on there. Yeah. Tella says a big ship does make it hard to be chill. Uh, California Linda says, thank you for a fun morning off the International Cafe. Ooh, that's good. For lunch and wave watching, Churchill's Lounge is closed in Australia's waters. That's it, Churchill Lounge. See you next week. Will you enjoy your lunch at International Cafe? I love that cafe. Yes. Yeah, and y'all just keep having fun. Yeah. Y'all have the best time ever out there. And week after week, y'all are out there having fun. I get more and more jealous every week. Uh, the other James would like to know if you could repeat what you said about the cigars because the brother moved the bar and we missed it. Okay. So on Royal Caribbean ships, on that particular class of ships, you're going to have, you'll have smoking outside on deck five. You will have a smoking area up on the Lido deck. It'll be to one side of the pool. I want to say they're all on the left side, but sometimes they can move from ships. The casino, um, you'll have to check that particular ship, see if it has a cigar bar. Um, it may still have a cigar bar itself on it. And then up one deck above the Lido deck, last time we were on Royal Caribbean, near the pool, at nighttime they had a section there for cigars under the stars where cigar smokers would get together and hang out and smoke cigars for a couple hours. So it gives you a couple of different choices around the ship for that. Yeah. Um, but any time of day, the smoking area up on by the pool and the smoking area down on deck number five. You can smoke cigars in both of those. James says, I do believe the same 10,000 people are on those ships. <laughs> uh, California Linda says, check your email tomorrow. Okay, absolutely. Because I did get your messages. I think that was all comment. But I know you, you sent me some stuff and I did answer, I believe I answered about the uh <clears throat> the criteria and stuff that you guys were gonna do. I like that idea. We appreciate that thank idea. Thank you, thank you. You're taking a little something off of our plate, and we actually really, 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 really appreciate that. Plus, I think the more involvement we get from a group, it really becomes more of a group cruise versus a cruise that we host. It becomes an honest group cruise with, with the participation. So thank you. We love it. Um, Attila says, keep having fun, California Linda. Yum, International Cafe. Yes. Bajarn, if I'm going on a cruise for the ship, I think I'll try one of those steam cruises, maybe the Blues Alive at Sea Cruise. Hey, steam cruises are fun. We went on that 80s steam cruise. Had a blast. Yeah, I will say that. Some of those steam cruises have some really good, they bring on that special entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I know we went on the 80s one on the Ruby. No. Yes, yeah, Ruby Princess. For the Ruby's Princess. And I, the entertainment just was the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, real nostalgic stuff. And then I know there's more 80s cruises coming up, but there's a theme cruise out there for just about everything. Um, there are superheroes and sci-fi and wrestling and love boats. And, you know, if you're a Taylor Swifty, uh, um, those are going on out there. So theme cruises can be a lot of fun if you're into that thing. Obviously, be into that theme. Yeah. Because it's all about that theme. Yes. So you really got to be into it. Hey, because I know when we were on the 80s cruise, and I'm I'm assuming that there were some folks on that particular ship that booked that cruise without paying attention to what it was. 
because we heard a couple people grumbling. Remember that lady that she was she was taking down the decorations, ripping down like '80s decorations off the wall, and not like, oh, I'm gonna take it. It's a cool souvenir. Like ripping them off and throwing them on the floor. She was just upset that it was '80s thing. Yes. So yeah, definitely make sure you book the right one. Maybe that was a bad time in her life. We brought back memories. Maybe, but she should, probably shouldn't have gotten on the ship then. I'm just <laughs> saying. You know, like I hate the '80s. Well, why are you probably on the wrong boat? Yeah. Let's be honest, you were probably it's on. Boat. It's a ship. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Okay. Uh, so I think we're going to get ready to wrap this up today. If anybody, if anybody has anything else, I do want to end it today saying this much. I have looked and I tried to get the information today, but I am still not able to find out whether or not Joey has found some love. Maybe it's just too early to find out about Joey. And I really appreciate all the people that would comments on Saturday's vote video, most of which were, who the hell is Joey? <laughs> really made my day. <laughs> but yet, we still don't know whether or not Joey has found love. I have made it Tiffany's mission between now and next week. She must be able to come on next week and let us know a current status of Joey because I, I realized that Joey has now all found a place in all of our hearts. So we must know what has happened to Joey. And I can't remember who said it, but my best one I thought with the week was someone said, the hell is the bachelorette? <laughs> <laughs> my kind of people. Yeah, Ms. Jaren said the 80s was great. I was young then. <laughs> Me too. But it was a great time. It was an absolute great time. All right. You got anything else, baby? I found the Belize Port website. It's called Port Coral. And so um, it hasn't been updated in two years. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I will say this much. The, the November 17th cruise that we're talking about doing, I believe, goes to Belize, which means we'll at least get our eyes on it. Yeah. James says, laugh out loud, funny, good night. All have a great next of the week rest of the week we will we will we will for sure actually have the whole weekend off coming up i'm very excited somebody have I'm fun very excited and thanks for spending the time with us thank you for spending the yeah. time with us <laughs> and until i said yep we'll see it <laughs> so. yeah so yeah we may have to wait until then to actually get a for somebody to get a, you know, an actual eyes view on what is going on with that place. Yeah. You know, in fact, they haven't updated in two years. And honestly, I haven't seen any stories on it in a while. Kind of makes me wonder how much is actually happening to it. Is it even continuing to go forward? So it says, good night. Got to run with the dogs. Have a good night. Yeah. We'll yeah. Ours is starting hard. to get wiggly here, too. But thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We really, really appreciate it. Tons of fun, love these live conversations. Yeah. So we'll keep our ear out for Joey. Because, you know, that's super important to me now. It's become a part of my life. But like always. We'll see you out on the high seas. Good night, everybody. Good night. Okay, well, that's fun. Oh.